Hello and welcome back to our online English class. So today we are going to go over lessons E and F and we're also going to review units 7 and 8. So uh, let's take a look at page 104 in your student's book, page 104. Okay, so um, let me actually make this into one page. All right, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, so it says, uh, before you write, talk with a partner. Who do you send thank you emails to? Make a list and share your list with the class. But um, of course, you know, you, you can't share with the class and that's fine. You can just um, practice on your own or share with someone in your family. So um, let's just brainstorm. Um, who do we send thank you emails to normally? So you might send a thank you email or a thank you letter uh, to a job interviewer, as you can see here. Um, we might also send thank you emails and letters to people who gave us gifts or presents for our birthday or our children's birthdays. Uh, we might send um, thank you emails and letters to people who attended a wedding um, our wedding um, or another important gathering important event so uh, those are some um, people we might send uh, thank you emails and letters to uh, but let's take a look at uh, letter b let's read this thank you email i'm going to zoom in one more time okay so it says dear ms hill I would like to thank you for the job interview I had with you on Monday, September 29th. I appreciate the time you spent with me. Thank you for showing me around the store and introducing me to some of the, some of the employees. I felt very comfortable with them. Thank you again for your time. I hope to hear from you soon. Sincerely, Eden Babayan. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at these questions. Okay, who wrote the email? Okay, who wrote the email? And uh, you should be very familiar with the, this question because I ask you these questions all the time. <laughs> uh, so this should be pretty uh, quick. Uh, so you, you should say, Eden wrote the email or Eden Babayan wrote the email. Okay, and if you remember, we, uh, we read Eden's blog post um, or Eden's blog uh, during our last lesson. Um, so we can see that she followed up with Ms. Hill, who was the interviewer, um, and uh, that's always a good habit. Uh, and maybe it'll get you the job, maybe it won't, but uh, either way, it's a very polite thing to do. Okay, so go ahead and take some time to complete uh, the rest of the uh, questions and uh, make complete sentences. Okay, write complete sentences, and then um, when you're finished, uh, you can continue the video. Okay. All right. So uh, let's take a look at number two. Who did she write it to? Okay. So in this case, um, it is of course the email. All right. Uh, so who did she write the email to, or, um, who did she write it to? <clears throat> Excuse me. So we can answer, um, she wrote it to Ms. Hill. Okay. So, uh, remember that, um, this is past tense did. So we have to say she wrote. So did plus write is wrote. She wrote it to Ms. Hill. Okay, and then number three, what is the purpose of the email? So we can say the purpose of the email is to thank Ms. Hill for interviewing her. Okay, so the purpose of the email is to thank Ms. Hill for interviewing her or um, to thank Ms. Hill for the interview. Okay, um, and you might have a, a little bit uh different structure or a different wording and that's okay. Um, and then number four, 
what information is in the first sentence. Okay, so the first sentence is right here, of course. Uh, so um, we might say um, the reason for the email is in the first sentence. Okay, the reason for the email is in the first sentence. Okay. Uh, because we can see here that it says, I would like to thank you for the job interview I had with you on Monday, September 29th. So uh, this is the reason uh, why she is sending this um, email. Uh, so we can say uh, the reason for the interview is in the first sentence. Uh, and, and again, as I mentioned, you probably have some different sentences too, and that's okay. You can say uh, the first sentence includes uh, the reason for her interview. Um, I'm sorry, the reason for her email. Um, okay. Um, and then, or you can even say the first sentence includes uh, a thank you message. But she actually says thank you many times. Uh, so um, it's probably better to say the first sentence includes the reason for her email. So number five, how many times did the writer say thank you? So actually, uh, we, I just um, said this, but she says thank you several times. Uh, if we, if you look, uh, it's three, one, two, and three. So we can say, uh, the writer said thank you three times. The writer said thank you, or you can say she said thank you three times. Okay. And then, uh, number, f number six, what does Eden want? To happen next okay what does Eden want to happen next so if you look uh, here you can say uh, you can see that it says I hope to hear from you soon so we can say she wants to hear back from Miss Hill okay she wants to hear back from Miss Hill or uh, she wants to hear from Miss Hill soon she wants to hear from Miss Hill soon uh, and you can include um, about the job interview she wants to hear from Ms. Hill soon about the job interview. Okay, and then number seven, how does the writer end the email? Okay, so we can say she ends the email by thanking Ms. Hill again, or you can say she ends the email uh, by saying thank you again. <laughs> So um, you can hear, you can you can see here. Thank you again for your time. Uh, I hope to hear from you soon. So uh, she says thank you several times, but um, she ends by saying thank you uh, again. And that's very common uh, when we are writing uh, a thank you email. At the end, we normally say thank you one more time. Okay. Uh, so let's go go to the next page. And this is actually an activity. Uh, of writing a formal thank you email to a person or a business. Um, but this one I can't really check anyway, so you can just do this on your own when you have time. Um, but make sure you include why you are thanking the person. So that's usually in the first sentence, just like with Eden's email, the first sentence included the reason uh, she was writing the email or the reason for thanking Miss Hill. Um, and then also make sure you mention something specific that you appreciate. So don't just say, thank you for everything. Uh, that's very common to say, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for everything. And that's okay. It's, it's good to say that, but, uh, it's very, um, uh, helpful and, uh, it, it, the person who receives it usually appreciates when you mention something specific. Um, so, uh, right now it's teacher appreciation month. So if you are sending, uh, thank you notes or emails to your children's teachers, um, it would be good to include something specific, uh, like, you know, thank you for, uh, writing, uh, encouraging notes for my uh, children uh, when they complete their homework, you know, something like that, something that's spe that's specific instead of thank you for all your hard work, because pro all teachers probably uh, get notes like that. Thank you for all your hard work. <laughs> and again, that's good, but it's helpful to include something more specific. Okay. And then finally, make sure you include um, another uh, thank you 
at the end of the email or letter. Okay. So, um, actually, you know, this is a really great activity, um, that you can, uh, practically use in real life, um, like I mentioned, to your children's teachers. Uh, that would be a great way to end the school year, which is coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, and also to appreciate your children's teachers this month. Okay, so let's move on to uh, lesson F, okay? Uh, another view. So this is on page 106 in your student's book. Uh, so you can see a chart, and the title is occupational projections and worker characteristics. That's a lot of hard words, <laughs> but um, occupational means related to a job. Um, as you can see, occupation it, uh, is the same uh, word as job and projections means like, um, uh, it's, it, it's like something that you can guess about the future, uh, based on, um, numbers, uh, that you have now. So project projections are, um, numbers about the future or guesses about the future and then worker characteristics. So this you should know already. Uh, you probably already know. Uh, but let's take a look at, um, the some of the occupations we have automotive service technicians and mechanics and then we have dental hygienists food service managers medical assistants retail salespersons and veterinary technologists and technicians lots of hard words <laughs> um, but you can see the next category is job openings due to growth and replacements from 2014 to 2024 so Based on uh, the numbers we have from 2014, we can project or uh, guess based on 2014 uh, what we will see in 2024, and that's the future. Um, and then we can see in the next category, percent employment change uh, from 2014 through 2024. Um, oh, let me make a note here. You can see an asterisk or a star um, in this category, and if you look at the asterisk at the bottom, uh, it means numbers in thousands. So even though it says 237, uh, this means 237,000. Okay. And then finally, in the last category, we have typical education needed for entry. Okay. Um, so that means that in order to enter into this field, you need to have post-secondary technical non-degree award, or you need to have a post-secondary technical non-degree award. And, and I know that's really difficult to understand, but basically it means that um, you can have uh, uh, some sort of a certification um, or um, some kind of uh, training uh, after high school. Post-secondary means um, after graduating from high school. Uh, so like college is post-secondary. Um, a technical college is post-secondary and vocational training is post-secondary. Um, those are, um, but some of them are non-degrees, meaning um, you don't need a college degree to enter into this field, uh, but you do need some kind of training. Okay. And then the next one is associate's degree. And as you know, associate's, associate's degree is usually a two-year degree. Okay. And then the next one is high school diploma or equivalent. So a high school diploma means you finished high school. Uh, and if you um, can't finish high school, you can also take a GED, which is called a general equivalency diploma. And that's equivalent or equal to a high school diploma. And then the next one, post-secondary technical non-degree. So um, this is similar to the first um, category. Okay. And then no formal educational credential, meaning you don't need a uh, um, formal or official training, um, or, well, you do need training, but you don't need official, uh, education, uh, to, to be a retail salesperson. Of course, uh, when you're going to need some sort of training when you enter that, um, uh, job or that company, but you do not need, uh, an educational credential. And then, um, the last one, of course, is the same as the second one, associate's degree. Okay. Um, 
So take some time to read uh, the questions and answer them. And uh, uh, when you answer them, I want you to practice making complete sentences. Okay, so pause the video and continue when you're finished. Okay, so let's take a look at number one. Which statement is not true about the jobs in the chart? Okay, so um, we can see that the answer is letter B, I believe. Let me just double check. Yeah, okay. So it says one requires a bachelor's degree. Okay, and as you can see, none of them requires a bachelor's degree. Uh, and a bachelor's degree, as you know, is a four-year college degree. Okay, uh, so that's a bachelor's, uh, and nothing here says bachelor's degree. So uh, we can see that none requires a bachelor's degree. Okay, uh, and if if you want to just check to make sure, um, I know uh, it says one requires an associate's degree. Um, so that means that at least one requires an associate's degree. We know that two require an associate's degree, but it's not saying that. Um, th that there are two, it just means at least one requires an associate's degree. And then letter C, one requires technical training. And as we can see, um, this requires technical training, the medical assistant. So uh, that's true. And then there will be more jobs in 2024 than in 2014. So if you look at the second category, job openings due to growth and replacements, uh, we know that there will be more jobs because um, it says due to growth and um, it also says job openings. So there will be more jobs. And if you look at the percent employment change, it's um, also uh, positive. Um, the numbers are um, positive and not negative. So uh, we know that, um, yes, there will be more jobs in 2024 than in 2014. So all of the statements are true except letter B. Okay, number two, which occupations will have the largest percent increase in growth from 2014 to 2024? Uh, so if you look at the numbers, we can see that 23.5 and 18.7 um, are the largest. Okay, uh, so this one is medical assistants and this one is veterinary technologists and technicians. So if we find that here, that's letter B. So we can say uh, veterinary technologists and technicians and medical assistants will have the largest percent increase in growth from 2014 to 2024. Uh, so make sure um, you pra you're practicing those complete sentences. Um, so again, veterinary technologists and technicians and medical assistants will have the largest percent increase in growth from 2014 to 2024. Okay, number three, what is the growth in number of jobs from 2014 to 2024 for dental, for dental hygienists? Okay, so if, you, if we look at that number, it says 70. But if you remember, this number represents uh, the number in thousands. Okay, so the answer is not A, the answer is D. So 70,000, okay? So we can say 70,000 represents the growth in number of jobs from 2014 to 2024 for dental hygienists. And you can also say um, the number of jobs will increase to 70,000 from 2024, oh, I'm sorry, from 2014 to 2024 for dental hygienists. Ooh, saying this date range is a mouthful. It's a lot of words or a lot of numbers so my mouth is really tired <laughs> okay and then number four what is included in this chart okay so the answer is letter c okay um, information about the amount of education necessary for certain jobs is included in this chart okay um, we can see that there is no salary information uh, there is no information about the decline of certain occupations everything is um, increasing, not decreasing. So decline is not um, included. And then there is uh, no information about the amount of work experience necessary for certain jobs. Um, there's no work experience mentioned, only education. Uh, okay, so letter C is correct. 
Okay, um, now let's look at exercise B. Alex has been working in a fast food restaurant for over a year. He works as a busser, cashier, and cook. He would like to be a restaurant manager someday, but that requires a high school diploma or equivalent. He dropped out of high school after two years. What should he do? Okay, so go ahead and uh, take some time to think about uh, some options and some answers for this uh, problem, and then uh, you can uh, move on to uh, part two of this video. Okay?